Jeffrey, don't you realize how bad that is for you? Every single day listening to degenerate music, frying your dopamine receptors, killing your testosterone? If only there was someone who could help young Jeffrey. Adonis. Adonis understands that young Jeffrey will not give up his addiction. Instead of making young Jeffrey try and quit listening to music, he just gives him healthier music to listen to. And then, there's you. You've been thinking more and more that listening to degenerate music is bad for you, but you haven't made progress in this just yet. It's harder than it seems, but now it's time to take action. Let me tell you a story. This actually happened a few months ago. I'm in the gym and I notice this white guy right over there. And he walks over towards this screen, like this almost computer screen that we have in the gym where you can type in a song name and it'll play on the gym speaker so everyone can hear it. He goes over, looks at like the song or the artist or something on his phone, types in a song and then it starts playing. It's a rap song judging by like the beat that's playing. And he's kind of like bobbing his head as he goes back towards like the bars that he was doing pull-ups on. And I really listened to the lyrics that the rapper was saying. It was a black rapper talking about fucking white women. And this white guy was bobbing his head along to that. Now, I'm sure that a lot of little soft, like little pussies will think that I'm weird for pointing this out. But I think you can imagine why this just seems so absurd. It's one level below this guy watching like a, like a BBC video specifically looking for like black guys fucking white women. And he's like what, touching his dick to it. The truth is that music is much worse for you than you thought. And so today I'm going to walk you through four of the dangers that comes with listening to the kind of music that you're probably listening to. And later on in this video, I'm going to share with you a major realization that I had, which is probably going to make you feel kind of sick. The first danger with listening to music is that affirmations really work. So you've probably seen online, people speak about affirmations and they're like, where you say phrases like, I'm confident, I'm a happy person. Even though they seem really cringe, the truth is affirmations and visualizations, that kind of psychological hack, those things actually work. If you look at yourself in the mirror every single day and say to yourself that you're ugly, you will start to feel uglier and you will also statistically become uglier like a year from now. It's not that you'll magically just be ugly when you say it, but rather you'll start taking care of your skin less. You'll start forming the identity of like a black pillar and you'll start giving up hope and you'll think to yourself, there's no point if I clean my hair today. Um, well, I'm not going to consider like improving my style. Working out doesn't help that much either. And before you know it, that phrase that you said to yourself actually has a massive impact. You started as this guy who objectively was like a five out of 10. But if you tell yourself that you are ugly every single day, you end up as this like, like fat untucked in shirt with a tiny little stain on it. Three out of 10 a year from now. The point of this is that we become the reflection of the beliefs that we have. The way that we can form beliefs is through things like affirmations, visualization. That is really true. I'm, I promise you, those things really do work. And so when you are plugging in a message that's basically brainwashing and you're constantly hearing some kind of affirmation, your brain's going to start to think that this is true. And so what's going to happen to you when you're listening to like degenerate music? A lot of the music that is degenerate is basically like modern day rap music where the rappers are talking about fucking girls and the female, no one listens to female rappers anyway, but like it's fuck bro. I'm just like visualizing some music video. I don't know which one in particular, but you can kind of imagine the ones I'm talking about where it's like some American rapper and he's got degenerate women with him and he's got like a, like gangbangers or something as well. And you're listening to the this audio and it's like an affirmation for your brain. By the way, bro, you probably haven't realized just how bad listening to degenerate music is every day. And so that's why I've made a new daily Spotify podcast that you can listen to so you can start your day off with some inspiration and it's specifically for young guys who want to get onto self-improvement. Go click the top link in the description, load that up, follow the podcast, and then continue watching this video. In the UK, we have like a type of music called drill. 
which is actually the one that I really, really like. I'm not going to lie to you, right? I'm not some weird guy who doesn't actually enjoy music. I have listened to music, especially in the gym, for the last, like, 10 years straight, and there's this kind of music that I really like, which is called drill music. And in that, it's literally about people from, like, basically London and UK who are stabbing each other based on, like, stupid post-code wars, like, basically gang wars. And it's guys who are, like, talking about stabbing each other and making money selling drugs and fucking women. And I'm listening to it, like, oh, yeah, you know, it's it hypes me up for the gym. Now, I'm not going to be so extreme to say, like, okay, if you listen to that kind of music, you're going to become a gang member after that as well. Not so much. I don't have the vulnerability to, for example, join like some kind of real gang or drug affiliated group, right? But what I do have some kind of like vulnerability tendency for is casual sex, sleeping with women. And so it's not so much that if you listen to a song from a rapper who's talking about dealing drugs, that you're suddenly going to become a drug dealer. But there's going to be something that you actually have a little bit of a tendency for, and that's what it's going to make you push into. So maybe you just get a little bit more angry towards like your girlfriend or your brother when you listen to these violent songs. Because again, every single day, if you're listening to music, which says like, I slap that bitch, I slap that bitch. Every single day, if you're listening to music like that, you're probably going to be a little bit more likely to like hit your system more in a fight. The second danger that you need to take responsibility for is that this kind of music is worse for women. I want you to imagine your future wife right now. She's the same age as you. Eventually, you're going to have like beautiful children together. And just for fun, she's going to be sat on her bed, putting in her AirPods. And again, listening to music where some rapper talks about like fucking a bunch of women. And the rapper's like, you know, got this kind of ego arrogance that he's so amazing. He's done better than everyone else. And your woman's basically idolizing him. This guy is talking about how great he is. And your woman is like plugging that directly into her ears, smiling, thinking like, oh yeah, yeah, like listening to the message of this guy talking about how great he is. If you don't think this is weird, I just want to show you something. I'm just going to show you a picture of a rap concert. You know how you often hear from girls like they really like music and they really like going to concerts because it's really fun and... They go to clubs not to like get with guys, but just to dance with their girls. When you see one of these like rappers on stage and you see the women shouting for him, the truth is that rapper can and actually will fuck multiple of those women there that same night. And if your girl is there and she's been listening to this same guy for the last year, listening to his like music, and now she is in there in front of him, I'm not saying that your girl is just going to cheat on you straight away, that every girl who goes to a concert is, like, going to have sex with a rapper. But I would actually argue that, like, a high percentage of the women there would be kind of interested in him. You know how, like, weird this is? I want you to think of that same... I didn't even write this down as a point, but this is... I thought this once, and this is so fucked, right? I want you to think about how many women have had sex to songs from, like, really famous singers, like, for example... Drake. R&B, there's this guy, Brent Fayaz. So basically, when women are, are like being sexual, often you'll play music or they'll play music and they'll often have like their kind of fuck playlist and or may, you might even have your own one. And what's happening is the same, like I want you to think of this woman who she's had sex with 10 guys in the last few years and she's always played like the relatively the same songs when it's down to like, you know, actually have sex, right? And it's the same songs by the same artists. And so think about the effect that that man, that rapper, that famous guy is going to have when, if they do ever like come across each other, when she's literally had sex and like orgasmed so many times listening to his words. Maybe you're like sleeping with your woman, making love, and she's still listening to the same kind of songs for, like about some other rapper. It's just, it, does it not seem absurd to you that like so many guys, including you, might be like getting sexual with a girl, playing music of another guy talking about how like good he is at having sex when all that's happening is like you're conditioning your girl to listen to like some other guy? Does that not seem fucked to you? Like, it's probably not going to happen. But if your girl comes across that fucking rapper that she's been listening to whilst having sex for the last years... His voice is almost like a classical conditioning, you know, like Pavlov's dog psychological experiment where you, if you give a dog some food, his mouth starts salivating. But if you ring a bell and give it some food, his mouth salivates. Then after enough times, if you just ring the bell, his mouth will salivate because he's expecting the food. Even if you don't bring the food out, his mouth salivates. This is classical conditioning. Imagine like classically conditioning your woman 
to be turned on to another man's voice. That's fucked. I want to just look at the picture again. Is this your future wife, bro? Where is she? You know, like all the shit they do in like, I've never been to like concerts like this, but I've been to clubs which have like a similar vibe. The rapper will get given like a big bottle of alcohol, like pure vodka. And he'll have like, he'll have a certain bottleneck to it where it can spray out in a better way. And he'll get women to like stand at the front right next to where he stood to open their mouths. And he'll be like putting it, like splashing it into their mouth. That's like, that happens a lot in clubs where basically like, they're almost symbolizes like giving them a facial and they're laughing and they've got it well, like, you know, he'll put it over their chest on purpose and stuff. Is this the kind of place that your woman's going to and it's just the concert? Now, I started this point by saying you have to take responsibility for this because this does not mean we're going to be sat here thinking, yeah, yeah, women are so bad and everything. Because if you want to attract the kind of woman who could never consider doing something like this, going to a concert or anything, you need to be the kind of guy who never would as well. You need to be the kind of guy who's not listening to degenerate music as well. If you want to attract the kind of women who would not get themselves in this kind of picture, show it again, then you need to become the kind of guy who's so separated from this yourself. You need to take a step back from this degenerate culture as well. And then another danger of music is the issue of dopamine. You've probably heard so much about dopamine recently. Music is a way of you just getting extra, like literally at, at another level of dopamine based on any activity that you're doing. Like for example, there's lots of guys who will play video games, but then also listen to music on top of that. It's like another source of dopamine just stacked up. What we really need to ensure as young ambitious men is that we don't fry our dopamine receptors because that's our source of motivation. You know how like sometimes you don't feel motivated to go to the gym, but sometimes you do. And those times, if you're honest, when you feel motivated to go to the gym, they're like the best workouts. It feels fucking awesome to be like motivated to do the hard work, right? We're young men and we're disciplined men and we're stoics and we're like, we're gonna stay disciplined. We're gonna do the work regardless. But if you can be motivated to do hard work, that's the 10 out of 10 situation. You actually want to like feel like doing the work because that's when you bring so much better energy to it. That's when it's just more enjoyable. When you fry your dopamine receptors because you're stacking like dopamine on top of dopamine, What's happening is that you're actually taking away your emotions. So I want you to think how bad this is. Let's say right now you're in school and on the way to school, you listen to music. What you're really doing is literally making yourself less motivated to do your schoolwork. Think about that on over the course of your time in the education system. You've probably just lowered your grades by like a whole point just because you listen to music 10 minutes every morning going to school. Just because now you, like, you've got slightly less, not, not that much, slightly less motivation to study today because your dopamine's like, you know, just nice and satisfied. It doesn't really care too much about doing the hard task today. Maybe if you're trying to make a business right now and you listen to, to music as you work, you listen to like, you know, music with lyrics with this the hyper-stimulating degenerate. Exact same thing. If you had unlimited money, how much would you pay to be 5% more motivated throughout your life? I would honestly pay probably like a million dollars for that. Honestly, just 5%. So that probably, like, I don't know the statistics, but that's probably the effect that music has on you. Just 5% motivation. The fourth point that I've written down is actually I wanted to give you a guide on how to stop listening to music because this is actually a thing that many people aren't talking about, but I think music addiction is really growing. And I have a really simple tip for you. Don't think about quitting music. Think about replacing it with something that's not as bad or even good for you. So there's two things I'd recommend. Listen to podcasts. And I actually have like a new podcast, which is for younger guys. And I like I'm posting episodes. There's like exclusive episodes that I'm not posting to YouTube. So you could go listen to my podcast. You can go find other podcasts that you like are finding value in. I really like the Huberman podcast. I like Chris Williamson. I like Diary of a CEO. I like Ali Abdal's podcast as well. You just save these on Spotify or whatever app you use and just listen to them on the way to school or at the gym instead. Now, at the gym is interesting because if I'm going to be totally honest to you, bro, I'm not listening to a fucking podcast when I go to the gym. It's just weird. I'm trying to like lift heavy weights and I'm listening to like Huberman do it. Like, you know, just talking about like sleeping well. It's not the right energy, right? So what I would say is stop right now. 
for the rest of your life, stop listening to degenerate hyper-stimulating music where it's a rapper talking about this, where it's like some pussy little, uh, couldn't, like, you know, normal singer who's talking about her getting his heart broken, all these, like, poor messages for your brain. Stop all of that and only from now on listen to instrumental music. So I know that a lot of guys like to listen to like lo-fi and um, brainwave kind of things. I think that those are absolutely fine. In fact, studies actually showed that if you listen to music which has no words in it, so it's an instrumental, so it's literally just like beats and stuff, that actually helps you to study more and to, um, to you know, get higher grades and everything. Not for everyone. So for me personally, I only work in silence, even with lo-fi or brainwaves or any of that stuff, even with like 40 hertz, um, white noise or whatever the fuck, try them all makes it worse for me. I only want pure silence. I want absolutely zero noise when I work. But for some other people, for quite a lot of people, listening to classical music, lo-fi, certain like uh, frequency actually helps them perform. That can be nice. But in the gym, what I would say is listen to music that basically has no words, but it is quite stimulating. So I listen to like I don't even know how to describe it. I listen to like Viking war music. So there's basically no words and it's just almost like what you'd listen to if me and you got onto a boat and our plan was literally, okay, there's a village over there. We're going to go kill the men, take the women, enslave their children. That's the kind of music that we would listen to. And so I'll, uh, I'll find the link. I'll, I'll link it below as well if you just want to listen to the same one. You will hit a PR listening to this kind of music a lot more than fucking that white guy who's turn on the music from the black guy talking about fucking white it's just it's just absurd bro never put yourself in that position i just just quickly just imagine how absurd that was bro imagine me in the gym that day seeing this white guy go over and put a song about like a and i swear to god the song was about the black guy coming over from africa and sleeping with the women here and like acting as if like he was better than the white guys here is that not a fucking cuck fetish that's, it's, it's almost absurd to me. And I know some dickhead is going to watch this and think, oh, well, Hamza's being racist. This isn't fucking racist. It's just listening to any, like watching normal porn is fucked up, even if it's of the same race as you or not. To hear or see the success of another man, specifically when it comes to something as primal as like basically impregnating another woman, that's fucked if you voluntarily see it. If you voluntarily watch porn, which is a guy fucking the woman that you want, or you voluntarily listen to music, which is about the like some guy who's better than you fucking the women that you probably would want. That's literally like a mental illness. That's disgusting. This is the huge realization that I had when I was making this video. I think there is going to be like a new thing in self-improvement. You know how there's been no fap? I think there's going to be like a no music sometime soon i think more and more young guys are realizing this is yet another source of like degenerate dopamine that we need to get rid of follow the rules that i said you don't have to go no music just replace it with something that's like a little bit healthier instrumental but get rid of this like degenerate messaging in your brain i have a quote from the quran and from the bible that i'm going to read to you this is from the quran indeed the hearing the sight and the hearts about all those will be questioned I remember my mom telling me about this. She used to say to me that when you pass away, you'll basically have like a confrontation, almost like an interview with Allah, with God. And he will ask you like what sins you have committed and your individual body parts would actually speak out loud and say to God what you have done. And I think like from what I know is music is actually seen as haram inside the Islamic religion. Music is actually seen like against their rules. And I wonder if there's any Muslims in the in like the comments and stuff. Tell us like exactly why and like what that means to you. Can you listen to no music at all? What if you're in the gym and there's like music playing? Is it should you leave or something? Because that's so super interesting. Honestly, like a lot of Islam is like is based. They're saying like the book has been saying things thousands of years ago that we now are like oh, hyping up saying oh my god this is like Hamza's another, another common Hamza W it's like bro th this shit was being said like a thousand years ago I'm not even special when I give you this advice and then there's a quote from the bible as well finally brothers and sisters whatever is true whatever is noble whatever is right whatever is pure whatever is lovely whatever is admirable if anything is excellent or praiseworthy think about such things this is about the importance of keeping like positive words in your mind words of faith of strong character of beliefs understand the dangers of the words that you hear in your mind 
is very, very high, a lot higher than you think it is. I really hope you'll take the actionable steps that I've given in this video. Take a step back from especially the degenerate stuff. And I'll see you tomorrow. Do the hard work, especially when you don't feel like it. Mwah.